I call Melissa Lee. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to take a call on the budget debate. But before I actually um, get on to the debate, um, I'd like to, first of all, um, send my condolences to the family of Pippi Boyd, who uh, was a Korean War veteran, and he passed away just last week. And he was a very special man, and he's um, I remember him because when I visited um, at the Marlborough, he actually gave me a, a beautiful tiki carving, and he, he, he had it uh, for a very long time, and he actually put it on me, the carving that he had, and he put it on me, and he's passed away. What a lovely thing to so do. that was a very lovely thing to do, uh, Tim, and um, I, I shall miss him. Um, so, moving on from, <coughs> from that. Mika Faitri, Honourable Mika Faitri, talked about how it has been nine long years, she says, in her debate. And you would have thought that when you, sorry, Madam Chair, when the members have been sitting on the opposition benches for nine apparently very long years, that they would actually have some plans put together when they become government. And think. this, you would you think would that. Think. That's right, Mr. McIndoe. You would think that. Ah, uh, sorry, Madam Chair. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I, uh, I, I don't mean you, Madam Speaker. I, I mean the uh, members of the government. Uh, so members, uh, I would like to think that they had a plan that, you know, when, when they're in, on this side of the House and in opposition and they are not in agreement with the government of the time, which was a fantastic government, I would have thought, um, and they should have had a plan. But they didn't. This is their first budget, and some people have actually said it was exciting, it was full of whatever. But let me just get on to what Mika Faitri said. She said they delivered for thir under 13-year-olds, free medical care for under 13-year-olds, as if that was a brand new thing that the Labour-led government has delivered for New Zealand. It's about tinkering at the edges. It was the national government that actually delivered free medical for under 12-year-olds. And they've literally only increased it by one. I think that's actually good. I mean, you know, increasing it for, you know, um, you know free medical care for children under, under 13 is good. But it is not something that they have delivered from zero to 13. They've literally just tinkered. Uh, Madam Speaker, earlier this week, I asked a question in this house to the uh, Minister for Broadcasting and Communications. And as a spokesperson, I do that quite regularly. And uh, she actually, in her answer, said something along these lines, that all ministers in this Labour-led government had to compromise. They had to compromise. Because what I said was, the minister, the broadcasting minister, actually promised the industry $38 million a year. She even took a cabinet paper which actually said, actually it was redacted, the bit that actually said $152 million for over four years was actually redacted. But the Minister for Open Government in, his, in her wise choice maybe failed to redact it properly, or maybe it was, it was one of her uh, staffers who actually did it, but you could literally cut and paste it and see it. She went to Cabinet to ask for $152 million for the broadcasting sector. What did she get? What did she get? She got less than 10%. She got less than 10%, Mr. Oh, McIndoe. That is less than 10%. That was too much to her. 15 million she got out of 152 million dollars that she actually promised the industry. And I remember the Christmas party that she attended for New Zealand On Air last year, where she was the guest. She was the, I, oh, you remember the breakfast, Mr. Carter? Yes, I think maybe it was a very expensive breakfast. But at the Christmas function of New Zealand On Air last year, she was so welcomed by the group, the, you know, the media people loved it because she was literally going to be delivering $152 million. No, but I guess what? I think, do you know, I have to actually say, I, I have to agree with Russell Brown. Russell Brown said this is a broadcasting shambles. 
And I have to agree with a number of other stakeholders who have actually used a couple of more choice and colourful words, but I better not use them because I might get ejected um, uh, from this chamber. I, and I would think that some of those words are actually unparliamentary. But I'd like to maybe use uh, what Joe Moyer of uh, Stuff NZ actually did. I mean, Joe Moyer rated the Minister of Broadcasting one out of ten. One out of 10 for her ministerial performance. And I guess when you consider the fact that this minister literally delivered less than 10% of what she promised and what she took to cabinet, she actually deserves that one out of 10 rating. What a chronic um, disappointment. It is a chronic disappointment, Mr. Um, and Mr. McIndoe. And um, um, Madam Speaker, apart from the broadcasting sector, uh, uh, actually, I remember something that uh, the Minister of Broadcasting put out today. I think it was a press release suggesting that um, uh, she will ensure the digital survival of a 1970s documentary series, um, and never mind the World War I one or World War II um, uh, footages, which are slowly po possibly dissolving in its own assets. Um, she is going to be resurrecting some documentaries. One of them is actually a documentary about John A. Lee to inspire us all, a documentary about an ardent socialist for our dear led government. What quality public broadcasting options that this minister is actually putting together. I, I, I am simply astounded at some of the uh, options that she's actually uh, talking about. And the thing is, she's delivered $15 million in the broadcasting sector, but it was supposed to have been for RNZ+. Plus. Radio New Zealand was supposed to deliver a brand new television channel within their means, right? In radio. Radio New Zealand was supposed to have a television channel with $15 million, which not all of it is actually going to Radio New Zealand. It's going to the ministerial advisory group. It is going to the ministerial advisory group's decision for a potential public media funding commission's decision to see whether the $15 million is going to go to RNZ or Radio New Zealand. And for me, as a former television producer and somebody who really loves public media, you know, public uh, broadcasting, I actually love it. I love the fact that she is championing it. I think that's great. You know, I think she, that's wonderful. But when you, when, no, not you, um, Madam Chair, when the minister promises so much and so little, when the minister delivers so little after promising so much, I would say that is a failed minister, yep. that's a failed promise, yep. and it is certainly something that we need to actually monitor. All talk, no dosh. That's exactly right. All talk, no action. So there's certainly no action, apart from the uh, certain breakfast that she actually had uh, with a certain um, uh, broadcaster. Um, Madam Speaker, I'd like to now move on to my other portfolio in terms of the ethnic stra um, uh, community strategy. I know I, I only have a certain amount, uh, very um, uh, short time left, but it is quite disappointing that the Minister of Ethnic Communities hasn't really seen an increase. Actually, she's had a decrease in the funding that um, um, uh, she requires, and for someone who is actually supposedly championing uh, the ethnic communi uh, communities, when considering the fact that the projected population of ethnic communities is set to rise from, you know, particular, you know, the Asian community, for example, is going to uh, going to rise from 12 to 22% uh, by 2038, and to consider that the language line, which has been very um, good at delivering services to the community is actually getting a reduction uh, uh, in expectations on their performance, reduction in funding in all of the um, our portfolio, and I think it's a reflection. Even the Minister of Education did not even deliver for the ethnic communities when he decided to do a survey of the education sector for the next 30 years. He was consulting, apparently, with the parents, but did not include the ethnic languages of the Chinese, the Korean, the Indian. So we, in fact, reminded the minister, now he's actually changed it so that those ethnic community languages are in in included. But the very fact that it becomes an afterthought actually lets me wonder whether the minister of ethnic communities is, in fact, doing her job championing for the rights of all 
New Zealanders who actually are not necessarily born in New Zealand, who actually come from different, uh, different races, different ethnic communities, speak a different language, have a different uh, religion, uh, do feel as if they are part of this country. And I think this is another minister who is subpar, and it is actually a part of a government that is definitely subpar. Very good. I call Lewis Awal. Uh, tēnā koutou mā ngai o te whare tēnā koutou.